morning, kindergarten. So I'm here today to talk to you about what it means to be a veteran. Okay? A few of you. Well, let me explain it to you a little bit better because I saw your posters over here of the peacemakers and peace breakers. Veterans are usually peacemakers. Okay? We are veterans are people that served in the United States military, either in the Army or the Navy or the Marines or the Coast Guard or the Air Force or I think that's it. That's it. So you guys wanted to know what branch of service I was in and why I chose that one. Right? So I chose to be in the United States Army. I was in the United States Army from October 23rd, 1996 until January 1st of 2005. And the reason I chose the Army was I originally wanted to go in the Air Force because they had two kinds of police officers in the Air Force. And they had ones that all they did was really like police work, like what I do now. But they would they told me that I had to go to basic training first and then maybe I get the job that I wanted and maybe I wouldn't. So I said, well, what, what will the Army do? And the Army said, well, yeah, you can definitely have that job. So that's why I went to the Army. Plus, my dad was in the Army. So I grew up on an Army. I was born on an Army base. And I grew up on Army bases all over the country. Um, so that's why I went in the Army. When I went in the Army, I joined the Army. I was living in Philadelphia. Who knows where Philadelphia is? Oh, I do. What state is Philadelphia in? I'll give you a hint. It's in Pennsylvania. So right there in Pennsylvania, the capital is Harrisburg, but Philadelphia is a big city right on the east end of Pennsylvania. So I went to a place called Meps, and Meps is the place where you get to go and you raise your right hand and you swear your oath of service. You swear, kind of like our pledge in the morning, but you swear to protect and defend the Constitution, which is what veterans did, what all the members of our military service do now. Okay, so we're peacekeepers or peacemakers. Okay, so after I went to that crazy place, Meps in Philadelphia, I went down to a place called Fort McClellan, which is in Alabama, right here. Okay, it was hot and nasty because it was October. And I spent the whole winter there. I was there for four and a half months, all the way through winter and into spring. Because what we did there was we went to basic training. We learned, we learned. But the biggest thing was discipline. They yelled at us a lot. Okay? But the drill sergeants wanted us to do exactly what we were told to do. So we had, they had to instill discipline in us and, and get us so that we would always do the right thing. Okay? But we learned how to, how to march and how to wear our uniforms, and that's where they shaved my head. It was kind of a sad day for me. Um, what did your uniform look like? My uniform at the time was green camouflage. It was all green camouflage and black boots. And a green camouflage, almost like a baseball cap. Hey, I know it's and then, hang on. <laughs> and then that's where we learned. We learned how to salute, and we learned how to shoot rifles, and we learned how to shoot pistols, and we learned how to be military police officers. And that's what I was in the army. I was in military police, or or MP is what they had. And then we wore this thing on our sleeve that said MP really big, and it was just like our badge for a police officer. What did your houses look like in Alabama? In Alabama, I lived in basic training barracks. There was one big, huge room with 65 of us, and we were all in big old metal bunks. And when we did wrong and we didn't clean up our mess, the drill sergeants would come through and they'd trash the place. Hmm. Mattresses and shoes and boots and stuff all over the place. So we didn't I clear bet our you kept it clean then. So we worked really, really hard to keep it clean because we didn't want to have to clean up that mess again. It took us three days for everybody to find the right shoes. Because we all wore the same boots. Right? And we all wore the same uniforms. So it took us forever to clean up that mess. So when I left Alabama, and we're going to have to go to our world map. When I left Alabama, I went to a place. And at the time, it was one of the worst places in our, country, in our world to be. Because this is back before 9-11 and all that stuff. I went to a place called the Republic of Korea. It's on a little bitty peninsula here. Can I move this? Sure. Uh, well, maybe. Well, I'll just pull underneath it, down. it. Yeah, it's right underneath it. This little peninsula right here, called the Republic of Korea, and the Republic of Korea is a country that's been in war for thousands of years because it's right in between Japan and China. 
And in Japan and China, historically, have always fought, and they've always used this peninsula to go back and forth and back and forth. So there are pe a people that have always been at war. And when I was there, in a long, long, long time ago, and your parents probably don't remember this, but your grandparents will remember this, is they did a ceasefire in Korea during a big, big war in Korea. And in 1953, they stopped shooting at each other, but they never stopped being at war. So they're still, 60 years later, they aren't shooting at each other, but they're still at war, so they're still not really happy with each other. Wow, Officer Fritz, that's really close to our Twitter friends in Hong Kong, isn't it? It is. It is, probably in the same time zone, even. Wow. So, so I spent a whole year in Korea, well, minus four days, because I was good and I got to leave early. They let me leave four days early. So I left Korea, and I went to a place, probably the best place I could ever have been stationed, in the whole of military, was... Fort uh, Campbell, Kentucky, which is right on the border. See where this little this little notch is? That little notch right there is where the base is. <clears throat> and half of the base was in Kentucky, and half the base is in Tennessee. And I spent about three and a half years there, but that's the home of the 101st Airborne Corps. The best place in the Army to be. When I first got there, I learned how to repel out of helicopters, and hook up Humvee trucks to the bottom of helicopters so they could pick them up and fly them around. So I went to a, a school called the Air Assault School, and it was the hardest 11 days of my military career. I was in the Army for eight years, and that was the hardest 11 days of my military career. But I got to wear a pair of wings afterwards with a little helicopter in it, my Air Assault wings. Probably the proudest moment, other than pinning on my sergeant stripes. So I was at Fort Campbell from 1998, while I was there, I met Mrs. Fritz, and then we had Abby Fritz, our, our oldest daughter. I know her. You know Abby? And then uh, I re-enlisted. I, again, raised my right hand, and I said I would swear and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I would do more time in the military. And they sent me to this horrible, horrible place in the middle of the ocean called, it's not on your map. Mm, probably underneath there. <laughs> Lift it out. There it is. I went to Hawaii. <gasps> because at the time, when I re-enlisted and I started over again with a new contract, there were three places, four places that you could go and do an overseas tour. I could go back to Korea. Didn't want to do that because I was married with a new kid. I could go to Alaska, but I didn't want to be cold. <laughs> Silly, I live in Craig now. I could go to Europe and go to Germany, but that was about it. So I decided to go to Hawaii. And Mrs. Fritz and I went to go move to Hawaii, and we were at an airport in Los Angeles called LAX. Has anybody ever heard of that airport? Yeah. Big, huge, crazy, crazy, yeah. huge airport. Yeah. And we woke up in the morning, and we were in the hotel, and we went downstairs to breakfast, and what did we see on the TV? Anybody got a guess? Yeah. What's your guess? The big crazy I'll give you a hint. We saw airplanes crashing into buildings in New York City. And I knew the whole reason why I joined the military was that day. Because I knew that our country was going to be at war. Hang on. I'll get to you in a minute. I knew that our country was going to be at war. And I knew that it was going to be a big deal at that point because you see buildings crashing into, or airplanes crashing into buildings in New York City, and an airplane crashing into the Pentagon, and an airplane crashing into a field in the middle of Pennsylvania. It was very hard for me to watch. It's still hard for me to talk about today, because I got, you guys are, were born way after this happened, but I got to witness it on TV, and it was very hard for me to see, because I'm a peacekeeper, I'm a peacemaker, and those people were, were peace breakers, right? So, um, <clears throat> Sorry. After we were in Hawaii for about three and a half years, uh, I, in April of 2004, long before again any of you were born, I was told it's time to go to Afghanistan. And Afghanistan's a place here where we've had, well, it's in, it's in what your map says is Eastern Asia, but we call it the Middle East. And it's a very, um, it's big. But it's very dangerous. A lot of people there that don't like Americans and they don't like what we stand for. They don't like the freedom and the peace that we have in our country. 
<clears throat> but three days before I was supposed to go to Afghanistan, what happened? I got diagnosed with a medical thing. It was silly. And it was just a dumb little thing that I was born with. And they said, no, nope, you can't go. You can't deploy. And my mom and my wife both told me later that they had a dream that I had died in Afghanistan. So <clears throat> what that was all about and what we think that was is, is that was just God's way of making it so that I didn't have to go. Somebody so, stole our skyscraper and the day, and we didn't know where it was, but my brother did and I did. Okay. And somebody stole it. Okay, hang on. We're going to talk about stuff later. So I didn't, get, I didn't have to go to Afghanistan, even though I really, really wanted to, because at the time I was a sergeant. And I was a team leader and a squad leader, and I had soldiers that I led that were my soldiers. They were my troops. And I trained them. And I'm, I was ready to go to war with them. And I was ready to do everything I had to do to protect our way of life and my troops and bring them home safely. And that was probably the hardest thing of my military career was watching my soldiers deploy without me because those were my guys, those were my troops. So after I got out of the military in 2005, when we were living in Hawaii, where did we move, do you think? Great Colorado. Ah, <laughs> not to Great Colorado. I moved to Aurora, Colorado. And that's where I wanted to, that's where I wanted to change my my career from being a military policeman <coughs> to being a good old-fashioned everyday street cop. And I ended up working for the 911 center in Aurora for about three and a half years. And then I went to the academy and I moved up here to Craig. And I've been here in Craig for five years since you guys were all little babies. I've been here for five years. And now, starting this school year, I'm your school resource officer. So I'm the police officer that's in your schools all the time. You probably see me around. Huh? So is he still a peacemaker? Yes. Yeah. Still a peacemaker. And that's been my, and honestly, guys, that's been my work of choice since I was 17 years old. I started out as a firefighter, and then I was an EMT on an ambulance, and then I joined the military. So I've been a peacemaker officially for, oh, shoot, 26 years. Wow. That I've been doing something in public safety. So, wow. so the I questions think originally were, Branch of service, why I chose that branch of service. Well, my dad was in the Army for 23 years. And they moved all over. They've moved 31 times in 23 years. I don't know how my mom stood it. But they lived all over the place. They lived in Japan, and they lived in Europe, and they lived all over America, and they lived all over the place. Were the houses and the food a lot different in Asia than they were? You know what? In Korea, Korea was very interesting because when I first got there, they said, you're going to be sick for two weeks. And I said, really? And they said, yeah, when you get there, you're, because the air is so dirty, you get sick. You get like a really bad cold, because the air is really, really dirty. When it, when I was there and it was wintertime, it snowed, and you know what color the snow was? It was gray, because it picked up all the dirt in the air. That's how dirty it was. But their houses are stacked really super tight right on top of each other in the city, and then out in the country, they're really not that nice. They're just kind of steel and just metal roof and whatever they can put together to make it work. What I remember driving eat? around in the summertime and, well, here's one of the cool things. We went out, we went to a training on the Eastern Peninsula uh, in a city called Poham. Amazing that I can remember that. It's been 15 years. But we were out there and they had these huge, huge frames with all these sticks. And I'm like, what is that hanging there? Because we had what were called katusas. They were Korean army soldiers that they lived with us and they were in our platoon and they worked with us and they spoke English and, and they taught us Korean and they take us out on town and, and all that stuff. So when we didn't understand something, we asked one of our katusas, hey, what is that? And it was squid. Sticks and sticks and sticks and sticks and sticks covered with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of squid that they were drying out to make squid jerky out of. Was it good? That sounds yummy. I never tried it. Didn't eat it? I never I tried, tried it. But you know what I do? Because I grew up in a military family, and when I was little, and actually kindergarten and first grade, we lived in Hawaii when my dad was stationed there. So we ate a lot of Chinese food and Japanese food, and a lot of the Hawaiian culture is, is a lot of the Asian culture as far as the food's concerned. So I grew up learning how to use chopsticks and eating Asian food. So I, I ate my way through Korea. It was <laughs> awesome. But I never could try this quick. Hmm. Well, been. before we ask you some questions, Officer Fritz, okay. I think we all need to tell Officer Fritz, thank you for serving our country. Thank you for serving our country. Well, you're very welcome. It was my pleasure.